Hello, I'm Atuba Judge. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you today. Thank you for the opportunity to receive your truth in our hearts. And Lord, we receive our daily bread today. And your word fills our hearts and is controlling our thoughts and our decisions today. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we're looking at forgiveness and, and what Jesus said about forgiveness. And we're looking at how it works because Jesus didn't really explain how it works. But I'm showing you from the story of Joseph how forgiveness works works. So we're looking at Joseph now in, in Genesis chapter 45. This is the conclusion of the matter. This is Joseph telling his brothers, look, hey, you guys sold me into Egypt. So I'm supposed to be angry with you guys. I'm supposed to be vexed. I'm supposed to take revenge against you guys. But you know what? I interpret the whole thing differently. And how do I interpret it? No, it is God that brought me to Egypt. He used you as the instrument. Praise God. Now, that's one thing I want you to understand, first of all, before you think about forgiveness. Because this is the reason to be easy for you to forgive. I told you two days ago, there is no man that can raise a finger against you without God's permission. I'm telling you the truth. It will not even come to their mind. Have you ever wondered? You, you remember Moses. Moses. Moses at a point was terrorizing Egypt. I know the funny thing. Moses was living in Egypt. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> he, would go, he would go to Pharaoh. Because Goshen belongs to Egypt also. So he will go to Pharaoh. The Lord says, the Lord, let my people go. If you don't let them go, tomorrow a disaster will happen. This is what's going to happen. And he said, Pharaoh said, get out of my palace. Who's, who's God? And, and trouble will happen. Oh, he will send for Moses. Moses, please come and have you ever thought about it? All this war, why didn't Pharaoh just order for the arrest of Moses and tell them to lock him up in a dungeon? for the rest of his life. Or, Moses, you're causing us too much trouble. Hey, guys, take him outside and kill him. Have you, you know, we didn't read that Pharaoh tried that and Moses escaped. No. Funny enough is, it never even crossed Pharaoh's mind that I have the power to kill this guy. <laughs> Praise God. Yes! It didn't. So what am I saying? No man can lift a finger against you without God's permission. And let me tell you the secret about that. When God gives such permission, there is a boundary to it. There is a boundary. So, so Joseph understood this. That's why it was easy. To forgive. So when you see people take those actions against you, the first thing you should be thinking about not is not their wickedness. The first thing you should be asking yourself is, what? Well, why would God allow this to happen at this time? What is God up to in my life? You see, because the focus is you. You need to understand this. I'm not just preaching to you. I'm telling you truth. Now that's why I'm showing you an example in Scripture. I'm telling you the truth. When you realize someone has cheated you, you're first all like, okay, Lord, what is this all about? What's your wisdom concerning this? So, what are you doing? Acknowledging him in that situation. Lord, I know these people don't have power over me, but why would you allow this to happen now, right now? Why would you allow this to happen? When you learn that attitude, then you will learn to take every challenge as a stepping stone. This is the secret of it. Because when you talk to the Lord like that, what do you think the Lord is going to tell you? He's going to give you words. He's going to tell you, son, take your eyes off them. This is what I want you to do. 
Sometimes when God wants to turn the attention of your life to the real thing that he has gotten for, maybe you're looking in the wrong direction. You know how it is. You're looking at promotion. Oh, I have worked in this firm for like 10 years, for like 20 years. I think I'm due for that management position. I'm due for, to, I'm supposed to be in this place. And then you're like, mm, according to the steps, according to, you know, from precedents that have been set in this place, at this stage of my life, I'm supposed to get this. So you, you're now thinking, mm, so I should, eh, it, it should be me now, it should be me now, it should be me now. And then you hear they're going to have a management meeting to take a certain decision concern. Oh yes, that has to be for me. And then the next thing, they give you a sack later. And then you read it and say, you know, based on um, this, 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 we, we don't think we will need your services here anymore. Hmm. And then the next thing someone comes to tell you that, oh, do you know the truth? That man wanted to give his brother that managerial position, or he wanted to give it to his favorite person, but you were going to be the challenge, so he decided to terminate your appointment. That reason they gave is not the real thing. And then you're bitter, like, why, why? Oh, hey, 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 pause. Pause. Remember I told you this, I think last week, I said this to you, I said, that at certain times, when God wants to lift you up, and most times, especially when you are not cooperating with him, see, he says, well, why won't I cooperate with God? Your mindset can stop you from cooperating with God. Yes. Now, several examples I can give to you. You remember David. God had told David by prophecy. See, Samuel came to lay hands on him and told him, you will be king. Shortly after that, David was invited to the palace. Out of nowhere, someone just comes and says, hey, are you David? Say, yes, the king wants you. Me? What? No, no, don't worry, it's for good. And then he... He got into the power. Now, the prophet just told me a few days or a few weeks or a few months ago that I'll be king. I'll operate from the palace. Now, the, pal the palace is sending for me. Okay. And then he got to the palace. And, and, and so says, Yo, David, I, I heard you play the harp very well. <laughs> you know how we do it. <laughs> By the grace of God, sir. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. I've heard of you. I've heard of your testimony. I want you to do something. Can you play? Can you play some? You know, too. He said, I, I left it at home. Go get it quickly. He went home, got his harp, and then he began to play for the king. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 you know what? Um, whose is that? All right. Tell his dad from today he's a staff of this palace. A personal assistant to the king on music affairs. <laughs> Praise God. And, and, and David, if you think about what I'm telling you now. <laughs> you know, don't, don't just look at this thing. You think yourself as David that day called to the palace. And you're looking at the palace and say, wait, to, am I on my journey? That man, that prophet said I will be king in this same palace. And now I didn't lobby for it. I was sent to this palace. I'm already a staff of the palace. Is God trying to do something here? Yes, God is trying to do something here. It's obvious now. <laughs> Praise God. And then suddenly, the opportunity came. You killed Goliath. And like, whoa. Everybody's now seeing your strength. Oh, this guy, man, he is fit to be king. Because <laughs> king means leader. King means champion. Wow. And then they even went as far as printing your posters around town. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, look, man, David is the real king. <laughs> Saul was afraid. David did the job. Now, in your heart, you just want to be, ah, no, 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 hey, king, I didn't, I, they didn't, I didn't even, I don't even know who printed those posters. I don't know who, who I don't know who did that advert. I really don't know. King, sincerely, I just want to serve. Good hearts. But suddenly the king turns against you. And then before your eyes, he threw a javelin at you to kill you. Not, not, not to threaten, to kill you. And you missed it. Hey, do you know what David did? He ran from the palace to save 
his life. Now, someone else could have thought, hmm, it seems the devil wants to use this king now to push me out of my inheritance. I'm not leaving this palace. The God that has brought me to this palace, he will keep me in this palace. Hey, you know something about David. David is someone also who had learned to inquire of the Lord. Now, you see the character of this man. To work effectively in the place of forgiveness, you must learn in all things to acknowledge the Lord. So I believe it was the Lord that commanded David, get out of this palace. But Lord, but Lord, but Lord, you, you, you said I will be here. Why would you be telling me to leave? You must remember this principle. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. But when it dies, it produces its real fruits. That's a principle with God. If God has promised you something, you will be given an opportunity before even that thing comes to let it go. What is God checking at that time to check whether you still trust in Him or you are going to hold that thing as... You know what I'm talking about. Now you will use His word against Him. You know God did it to Abraham. Son, Isaac. In Isaac shall your seed be. And now he says, give me this son Isaac. Go kill him for me. And Abraham obeyed God. So here is David in the palace already. Established in the palace as a champion in the palace. Yet his heart was honest. He had no plans to overthrow so. If I know how at some point you begin to think, maybe God didn't mean king. Maybe God just meant that I will be in this palace assisting the king to do, you know, I know I'm the real champion, but I mean, I mean, it doesn't matter whether I'm king or not, but as long as Israel is being ruled well. See, but then when he saw danger, Lord, what do I do? Get out of the palace. And he obeyed. But you see, he was smart enough to do it properly. Now, that's another thing you need to learn. Be smart. You know how he did it? He called Jonathan. He said, Jonathan, I'm going to, I'm leaving the palace. So why? Your father wants to kill me. No, no, that's not true. He, he, did, he, he threw a javelin at me to kill me. Really? My dad? Yes, your dad. No, no, no. Okay, you know what? Let's do it this way. You go for dinner tonight. I will not be there. When your father asks, you tell him that you gave me permission to go see my parents. And so I left to see my parents and then see his reaction. If he, if he says, okay, 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 they're good. It means his anger is down. I will come back. But if he says, if you see his anger is, if he's, if he's angry about that, you know that. So Jonathan said, fine, good deal. So this is how you do. Know. Okay, fine. So he went. Where's David? Oh, that I gave him permission to go see him. That you gave him what you fool. The next thing they that threw a javelin at him too. Like, whoo. He came to David and said, young man, run for your life. Praise God. May God give you friends like Jonathan in life. Praise God. So, now, just like Joseph, David didn't hold these things to heart. See? But I want you to see something about Joseph's life. He didn't just wake up when he saw his brothers and he said, Oh, I don't hold these things against you. I forgive you. He had already forgiven them in his heart. Now, you need to learn what I'm about to say to you now. You forgive expressly. Never hold anything to heart. But before you can trust yourself in the hands of the people that have hurt you before, you must see real sign of repentance in them. Did you get that? I'll take it again. Forgive expressly when people hurt you. But before letting them into your life again, in the same kind of position where they can hurt you, you must see genuine repentance on their side. 
I'm going to explain that to you tomorrow because our time is up already. Praise God. Father, I pray today as we step into this day, opportunities for blessing will come our way. And the eyes to see has been given to us. And we'll function in it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.